Like I used to go to Gucci and be like, I would just try things on. And then they'd be like, so can I like, can I, you know, cash anything out for you? And I'd be like, no, Later. Later. Yeah, no, literally I'd be like, <laughs> no, I'm going to come back. Yeah. I'm going to come back to this. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm not going to grab it right now. And they'd always be like, okay. <laughs> or I'd like just go walk around through oh. like, you know, the expensive neighborhoods and just get myself in the energy of it. And like, I was at Gucci last week, bought my dog a whole new outfit, new leash, new collar, new ch- uh, like They were that sitting there. Got it oh, going on. You should see my dog now. He looks <laughs> fucking gorgeous. But it's like, that's because I was in the energy for so long. The energy loves me. Gucci loves me. Money loves me. You know what I mean? Like, and you, yeah, we're all Gucci now. <laughs> it's like, so yeah, you just, you call it in and, and you build a new relationship with it. I don't look at it anything anymore. Like, ooh, or like sometimes I see like my followers drop a thousand or something. Like, oh, I guess people didn't like that. I don't give a shit. I loved it. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's less about them it's less about external it's about how i feel about it how i feel about gucci how i feel about people if you look at gucci like oh my god this is so fucking expensive no it isn't it's not expensive when you're a billionaire it's not expensive when you're a millionaire it's not expensive when you're anybody really it's like your concept of money needs to change and i know that's harder it's easier said than done when people are like well, fucking tell me that when I have $12 in my bank. But it's like, I've literally had $12 in my bank and I still walked into Gucci and was just like, I can do this. Like, this is great. This is yeah, this is fun. This is easy. Yeah. Like, try things out. You know, it's like, it's hard to shift that. And I'm not trying to negate that, but it's like, it gets easier. And then the money will start flowing. You'll start getting opportunities to make money. You'll find $2 on the street. And that's the other thing. If you find a quarter on the street, don't walk by it. The universe just put a fucking quarter in front of you. If you're not going to receive a quarter, why would they give you a million? It doesn't make any sense. They're like, I just put money in front of you and you walked by it. You're like scoffing at the, like, what? Or if you have a dollar, throw it to the guy who's asking for a dollar. You know what I mean? I bought a homeless guy a whole pack of cigarettes today. And I was like, there you go. And he looked at me like, holy shit. And that guy has now just energetically projected onto me. Holy shit. This guy has money. He just gave me a whole pack of cigarettes. How beautiful is that? And I was like, I wouldn't normally buy somebody cigarettes, but this man lives like near my house and asks for cigarettes every day. (laughs) Like I saw him at the cafe and she was even like, he only asks for smokes. Like he doesn't want food. So anyways, I don't suggest buying cigarettes, but. I mean, who cares? (laughs) It made him happy. Oh, he loved it. Loved it. That's what he wanted. Um, He manifested that for himself. He literally did. He <laughs> keeps smoking and he keeps asking. And like, there it is. It dropped right in his lap. Who are we to say no to that? Well, because it makes me, it makes me think as you were of times where I've manifested things mm-hmm. and times when I have it. Right. So you've given me a lot to think about. I'm curious as to what was maybe the first manifestation for you that was like, whoa, that's wild. Because I'll give you mine as like a, while you're thinking. Yeah. Um, it's it's for me the places where I have manifested most easily is where I live. So okay, this apartment's great. Yeah, right? beautiful apartment. It's an amazing Love apartment. this apartment. And when I was writing my list for my Lisbon apartment, everyone was like, "You can't find that in Lisbon." And you're Look right. At you now. <laughs> this list of stuff in this apartment is not available in Lisbon. Like, it's fair just, enough. Really, yeah. isn't that? That terrace, the elevator, the that new, bathtub. Like, come on, no one has a bathtub. <laughs> the fact you that know? you even have an elevator and only three floors blows my mind. But, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, that really quote unquote lucky. But I had always had this feeling of I can manifest any place if I just know what I'm going to feel like because of two examples right. in my life. Um, I lived in Los Angeles for 13 years, and there's this hike that was about 45 minutes away from me. But it would be the place where I would go if I needed some peace and rest mm-hmm. and like needed to connect to myself. I would drive to this hike, Tuna Canyon, and I would pass this house that was the last house before you get to the hike. And I'd be like, man, this is amazing. And I did that for probably like eight years without any thought of wanting to be there or live there or anything. Fast forward to, and this talks about like manifestation in progress. About five years into this process, I read for a woman and I, she leaves and she comes, whatever. I don't think anything of her. She turns out to be the mother of a woman who lives in that house. What? That is so random. So two years after I worked for the mom, the daughter's like, hey, would you come for us in the house? And I was like, sure. So I go to the house. 
we really connect. Over the years, we become friends. Now, if I'm in Los Angeles, she's like, hey, we have a whole second property on this ranch that's right next to the hike. And I stay in the house when I go to Los Angeles. That is wild. For free. That is wild. (laughs) Yes. And it is amazing. It is like, it is my most peaceful, magical place in all of Los Angeles. I can imagine. Yeah. It's a fucking ranch. It's a ranch. (laughs) Can I come? (laughs) Yes. You can come. And like she, and she is, she's just as generous as you are. And she is a hundred percent all of that manifestation energy and is just like a treasure to have in my life. But for me, it was such a manifestation story. There was no like intention around that. Right. It was me just being like, God, I love this place. And I wish I could come here whenever I needed it. You know, and think of how light that experience is for you to not put so much pressure on yourself to get it, to not think of how, how could I ever even afford a house like this? Why would I even, it's like you didn't put anything in your way. You weren't setting up your own speed bumps. And so many people set up their own speed bumps when like Venus is in Pisces right now, which is all like dream big and get dreamy and like. We're moving into a space where Jupiter is going to be moving signs soon. It, it's like we're getting into fucking dream big energy and like just go after it and feel it and express it and enjoy it and let it find you. And it will. And people are so conditioned to be like, but I can't or right. but it won't. And it's like, OK, well, then it won't. like then it won't and as part of that story i realized looking back it was being worked on totally like the mom showed up with me having no connection right you know universe if you will was like hey we are working on that just give us a moment exactly the the 3d needs to catch up with the internal every time you walk by you're like love this i feel so at home here this is wild and then it's like this lady comes knocking at your door who owns the house or whatever. Like, that's just, yeah, yeah, you need to allow the space to, and again, that's just removing the roadblocks. That's doing the shadow work around self-doubt. And then it's also just being open to, like, maybe you didn't actually want to do that reading, for example, but somebody was like, no, I think you have space. I think you, we could fit it in your schedule. And instead of you being like, no, I don't want to do it. You're just like, you know what? Let's just do it. Whatever. Like yeah. you were just in a space of flow and then like the connection happens and then it leads to the next, you know what I mean? And it's like being in that space of flow and being curious and excited about your curiosity about like, oh, where is this going to lead me to? And sometimes it doesn't lead you to what you want. But sometimes it leads you to the person who's going to lead you to what you want, or it brings you to an environment and nothing happens. But then you remember that environment and you go back, you know, a month later and then you meet somebody in that space. And it, it's like the way that your guides are connecting the dots on the other side energetically typically looks nothing like how we think it will look. So for us to then take control, get in our own way, create self doubt, get impatient, fall out of our vibration and go back into this like, meh, 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 meh. it's like, you're not doing anybody favors on the other side. They're looking at you like, can you just fuck off for a second? Like, give me a minute. It's like, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Like, let us organize this. Give it a couple weeks. Give it a couple months. Maybe you need a couple years. Maybe you need more fucking shadow work because we're really trying and you keep pushing the frequency away from you. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it, it's gonna... It's going to take the time that it takes. And if it's meant for you, it will not miss you. And the more in flow you are, the more ease they can throw things sort of in your stream. You know what I mean? And it can come towards you. And and I think people just get in their own way a lot. And I've done that. I did that for years. I did that for probably 25 or 26 years of just like constantly blocking my own shit with, or also with just like bad habits. It's like, uh, stop drinking so much. Stop drinking so much alcohol and intentionally escaping whatever you're needing to experience so that you can process. So that's the quote unquote shadow work, let's say. But instead of doing the work, you're just going to go out and have another drink. But then when you're having a drink, part of you is like, oh, should I even be here drinking? Why am I drinking again? Why am I doing drugs again? Why am I doing this again? Why am I hanging out with these people again? And it's like, you're constantly putting yourself in a vibrational sequence of low vibrational energy you're constantly putting yourself in a habitual space of people who are not manifesting their deepest desires 
why the fuck would I want to hang around somebody who really truly believes that abundance is hard so that they can get that shit on me? No, I don't want that. I'm okay to step into space with them and I can respect where they're at. And if I feel called to share something that I think will be received, then I'll do it. But like, I'm telling you right now, I'm not spending more than 10% of my time with anybody who is in like, you know, complete opposition of like the things I believe in. And I don't mean like we all have to think the same, but I mean, on a core level, like I know you, Floor, believe that abundance does come with ease. I know that you believe if you're in flow, good things come to you, that you trust your intuition. I want to be around you. I like the conversations we have about like investments you want to make or the people that you're hiring. It's like, that is a good vibration for me. That is a good energy for me to engage in. I like talking to people who are like, my company just made seven figures this month. And I'm like, fuck, yes, you did, bitch. And I'm not jealous because there's enough for my company to do that too. And there's enough for all of us to do that. It's like they're fucking printing money in the United States at any given time. It's like, I want to be around those conversations. I don't want to be around people who are like, eh, life is hard. Like, I know life is hard. It's hard for everybody and it's all relative, but also like, and I don't want to also negate privilege and all that stuff. And like, I'm also a white cis, I'm a gay man. So like, yeah, that's obviously been an issue. And, you know, there's a lot of other things going on, but I just, I do recognize privilege and access. And I think that part of my mission is to bring that back into balance. I believe we're rising. So it's like literally what I'm called to do um, to some degree, but on every level, individually, regardless of access or privilege or any of it, because I know a lot of rich white people, quote unquote, who are fucked right up and are constantly, maybe they have money because it was inherited or they got lucky, but they're like, they're either losing it, they're misinvesting it, they're spiraling in every which way. They're a fucking mess. They're all doped up on different uh, medication. It's like, and not to judge people for taking medications and all that stuff. I'm just saying it's like, it's all relative to where we're at. And each individual person can make a decision every day to be like, I'm not going to feed into this train of thought. And instead, I'm going to intentionally align myself with a different train of thought to change my physical experience. And that may take time. Yeah. And that may be a longer time for some people, um, but so like it's possible. Talk, yeah, let's talk shadow work because you've mentioned it. And it took me a hot minute to figure out what people were talking about when they were talking about shadow yeah. work. Yeah. Like, what do you, like, <laughs> well, it was like in the shadows? Yeah. <laughs> like, do I shut the lights off yeah. and just like <laughs> do some push ups? <laughs> like, what, what are we doing with the shadow work? So, what has been your experience of shadow work? I've done my own work. No. Obviously, yeah. But, and I have my own opinions on what shadow work is, but I'd, I'd love to hear it from you. I think shadow work just involves us acknowledging, accepting, working through, working with, and integrating with a heightened awareness all the parts of ourselves that typically fall into lower vibrational behaviors or thought patterns. So the idea of like, I'm not good enough. Does I'm not good enough stem from my abandonment issues from when my family broke up and I took on the responsibility of thinking it was my fault or I couldn't do enough or I'm the, and I was at a young age and impressionable and, or where does it come from? I don't know. So I'm going to meditate. I'm going to journal. I'm going to ask the universe to guide me. I'm going to work with therapists, with Reiki healers. I'm going to do tarot or astrology or, you know, it, you just dive into the esoteric tools that we have. You dive into psychosomatic tools you dive into physical breath work you dive in like there's a thousand modalities see which one tickles your fancy and and start there you know what i mean i think shadow work is recognizing that sometimes life just fucking sucks and it's okay to be like that really hurt me and i'm just gonna cry i'm gonna cry the deepest level of cry that I have. And like, I have five planets in cancer. Well, four and my son is a progressed cancer. So like, cry. 
That is a deep cry. That is an ancestral cry. That is a cry for the people. That is a cry for the divine feminine. That is a cry for like the abuse of like the earth. That is a like I when I and for a long time I didn't let myself go there. But like sometimes if I do like a solo like psilocybin journey, for example, which I love to do, um, not necessarily promoting that if you know whatever um not suggesting anything but i enjoy that at times and the level of pain that i have felt for even siblings or my parents the level of pain that i have allowed myself to experience to quite literally purge it out of my energetic emotional and physical body has created so much space for me to expand. And you can only expand as far outward as you have expanded internally. You can only go as high up as you have gone down. And I think that is what honestly makes me a good quote unquote teacher, makes me um, somebody who has things to say that I think people resonate with because I have literally been there. Maybe not to the same degree because we don't share the same gender or cultural norms or race or any of that stuff. But like, if we were to sit down and you were to tell me something that you've been through, I could hold space for that because I can see that on some level with a different experience, we have experienced a similar level of pain, whether or not that was inflicted you know in different ways by whomever or however or whatever like i'm not talking about specifics and this is where people you know sort of get all lost in like language and and semantics yeah. and all that stuff. i'm not talking about any of that i'm talking about like a feeling um and yeah i think diving into those feelings that are murky that are dark that are highly sexual that are repetitive and addictive and behavioral patterns that are you know i've been there i've had like the sexual um debauchery i've had the like impulsivity i've had like the addiction to like pleasure i've had the addiction to like the highs and the lows and the the drinking and the shopping like i've gone through it so like i know that it's there and it's very real and Shadow work is acknowledging that and also saying, I don't need to act out in those ways to feel whatever it is that I am lacking in that moment that is going to be a short-lived experience by grabbing externally these things. Instead, what I need to do is actually go and sit down 